So I. Jim, did you have to do a new password? No. I did the password. But was there a new one like last week or something? Yeah, it was. The new sign-on started last week, so she, she was on my certificate. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the collect of purity together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Plan the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
we thank you for the gift of the Holy Scripture, for its songs and poems, myths and stories, histories, teachings, and prophecies. May the Holy Spirit, who calls out those ancient yeah. writings, continue to call us out today, that our lives may reflect the first sermon of Jesus, our crucified and risen Christ, who brings good news to the poor and lets the oppressed go free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. Our first lesson is a reading from the book of Nehemiah. All the people of Israel gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday. Presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen. Lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God with interpretation. It gave the sense that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, this day is holy to the Lord, your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us sing Psalm 19 as we pray.
lesson is a reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear were to say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all prophets? Are all apostles? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater good, grits. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. That Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. As I read these, these passages, uh, uh, it made me go back to this time when uh, I arrived first here at St. James. We had been a part of SHARE. It was a food service that helped communities that lacked grocery stores and provided food at a discount. St. James was involved with SHARE for about 30 years. And one of the benefits of SHARE for those who remember was a Christmas dinner that could feed up to six people for about $28. The meal consisted of a canned ham, potatoes, canned vegetables, lettuce, fresh fruit, and a pie. In November, we would start making collections from members and friends to buy these dinners. And we provided between 75 to maybe 120 certificates to fish to hand out to families to help curb their hunger at the holiday. It helped me to see how St. James was, has always had a heart to feed people, both spiritually and physically. It took all of us, it took all of us from giving to volunteering to make Share Christmas happen. The coordinator collected the money to buy the Christmas meals from Share. Peter Oram provided a truck and a couple of employees from Midwest Ground Covers to pick up the food in Wisconsin very early in the morning. Then around 30 of us would show up in the parish house and we would begin unloading the truck, sort the food, and then teams would put food into the grocery bags, frozen hams into one, canned vegetables into another, uh, lettuce and fresh vegetables in another, and then fruit and stuffing mix in another, and the final bag had a pie for dessert. We had fun doing this together working, sorting, laughing, bagging, and finally distributing the meals to our neighbors as they arrived. If it was a family larger than six, we gave them two bags. And everybody who came to pick up the food here at St. James was so grateful. But I remember two households in particular during one of our giveaways. Leanne Banfleth, looked shocked. She met one of her high school friends and had no idea they were food insecure. They were going through some difficult times and it reminded us even our neighbors are going through tough times. But through that food, we let them know that they matter to God and to us. A senior couple walked in they had tears in their eyes. Thank you for the food. 
we only have social security to live on. And we had to make a decision this week. Do we pay the electric bill, buy medicine, or will we even have enough to buy food to eat? And they looked at the food that we gave them. They said, this will feed us for a week. As I read our lessons and gospel for today, I noticed a thread about community. The first is community and scripture. In captivity for 70 years, the remnant of Israel returned from Babylon. The community rebuilt the walls and the temple in Jerusalem. Joy returned to their lives and people asked Ezra to read to them God's instructions from Torah. Oh man, would that be great if you all came in one Sunday and said, Don, would you read scripture to us? I mean, we read a lot of scripture, but it was interesting how hungry they were for God's word. As we read familiar and comforting words, Torah brought back memories that God chose them, and that they chose to follow the ways of God, to love God, neighbor, and the stranger. The scriptures reminded them that they were a community created to be God's hope and love in the world. The second thread is the commu that community and the kingdom of God. You could always find Jesus in the synagogue on Sabbath. It was his custom. He goes to his home synagogue in Nazareth and he's handed the scroll for the day. Jesus reads from the prophet Isaiah. And Jesus says at the very end of the reading, when he hands the scroll back, today the scripture has been fulfilled just as you heard it. Salvation is being proclaimed now. And God's redeeming love is available now. The kingdom is now. Jesus initiates the good news of the kingdom. The words from Isaiah can be understood both literally and spiritually. We know Jesus taught kingdom living, abundant living, by following the way of God. We know Jesus freed those in bondage by demons, literally and spiritually. We know Jesus healed people, literally and spiritually. The blind, the lame, the lepers, the deaf, and he even raised some from the dead. And we know Jesus freed the oppressed, those with demons, the woman at the well, the woman accused of adultery, the rich young man, torn between riches or following Jesus. Zacchaeus, that little tax collector, who climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. I think I sang that Sunday school song to you a few years back. But he was a tax collector and a cheat. But he got changed. So many examples throughout the gospels of people receiving good news. Jesus, Jesus shared the good news of God's kingdom, giving people hope, healing and wholeness, abundant life and well-being. For 2000 years, Jesus anoints us, his beloved community, to bring the same good news to our homes, our businesses, communities, and the world. And the final thread is the gift of community. Last Sunday, I talked about the miracle of community, what can happen through communities using their spiritual gifts. Paul reminds us that we are not amoebas. Amoebas for Christ. Single-celled creatures that exist on our own. But rather, we are the body of Christ. We are one body with many members. And Paul points out that the church is just like the body. Jesus is the head. And we are one with many members. Each of us has a part to play in the life 
of the community. We could not have fed our neighbors like we did with shared Christmas dinners if it hadn't been for the whole community using their spiritual gifts. Some of you don't. Uh, some of you don't know the whole story about how we sh had to shift rather quickly because Cher retired because of Aldi and Walmart and others that provided places for people to shop in the rural communities. Cher retired themselves right before Christmas. We got panicked. It's like, what are we going to do? We we love to feed people. So I called Fish and they said. Well, you know, uh, if you go through Northern Illinois Food Bank, you can purchase Christmas meals for $18. As community, again, we made a difference, but this time, not with canned hams, but with turkeys. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, canned hams are much easier to stock and to put in places than trying to stock a bunch of turkeys. Well, that first year we provided 145 meals. Fish was so overwhelmed that they had to store the frozen turkeys in about seven different locations. Because at the time they hadn't remodeled, so they didn't have the ability to store all those turkeys. Fish contacted us, thanking us, thanking us for our generosity. But they strongly suggested if we could move our giving from Christmas to July, because you see, that's when people tend to forget about their neighbors in need. Christmas time, you know, from Thanksgiving to Christmas, it's a time of generosity for all of us. So we adapted and that's when we began Christmas in July. And together every year, we average enough funds for fish to purchase up to $25,000 worth of food for our neighbors. This year with our first Sunday offerings, we gave RIP medical debt $3,058. Doesn't sound like a lot. But for every $100 we gave, RIP could pay off $100 or $10,000 in debt. In total, we help reduce medical debt by $305,800. None of us could do that alone, but we did that as a community. So if you stop and look around you on Zoom and here in the nave, you and I are part of this body of Christ. You have gifts. You have abilities. You make a difference in this place and in this community. And we look to scripture to guide us and remind us that we belong to God and together committed to following the way of love. Jesus calls us to share the good news of God's kingdom with everyone through word and action. And finally, Paul reminds us that we belong to God and to each other as the body of Christ. Everybody matters. Everybody's gifts matter in serving God and others. So as we look to this coming year as a community, I pray that we will grow in faith and numbers as we serve as community. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let us stand as able and affirm our common faith as we say, We believe in one of God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, divine time made, of no one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was carried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We will look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of prophets and apostles, you call us to restore that which is broken and to proclaim your vision of a world made new. Create in us new hearts and strong voices as we pray. In our parish cycle of prayer, we remember Catherine and Alan Shire, Carrie Tab and Jane Slattery Curtis, and Jake, Sarah, Frank, and Rosalind Springer. Help us to celebrate each member of this body of Christ and our gifts you have given us to build each other up and to help us to share your good news in our communities where we live. God, God fill us with the power of your spirit. spirit. We pray for those who have been anointed or chosen as leaders of people that they may attend to the voices and needs of their people and be guided by you. God, God fill us with the power of your spirit. spirit. We pray for pastors and teachers of the church, that they may faithfully interpret your word for others. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Chilton, our assisting bishop, Paula, our bishop-elect, and for all ordained ministers and lay leaders in every faith community around the world. Help us all to be witness to your peace and justice for ourselves and others. God, God fill us, us with, with the power, power of your spirit. spirit. We pray for those who are poor and in need of assistance and for ourselves that we may open our hearts to their cries for help. Thank you for our ministry partners, Fish Food Pantry, Northern Illinois Food Bank, Feed My Starving Children, and Episcopal Relief and Development. May we continue to be generous to others in need. God, God fill us with the power of your spirit. We pray for those who are the captives of war and the victims of violence. May we bring them good news, both in word and deed. We especially pray for Ukraine, Afghanistan, Sudan, and the Middle East. God, God fill, fill us, us with, with the power of your spirit. We pray for those with physical challenges and spiritual struggles. Make us agents of healing and hope. We remember Paige, Matthew, Elizabeth, Tom, Susan, Tony, Nicole, Dorothy, the Harper family, Frankie, Alan, 
Sandy, Adam, Kathy, Elliot, the Lopez family, and the Tromboni family. Bring healing and well being through the Holy Spirit so that we may be a community of restoration and compassion. God, God fill us, us with the power of your spirit. spirit. We pray for those who are oppressed by powers beyond their control. Give us courage to work to set them free. God, God fill us, us with the power of your spirit. spirit. Gracious God, we also want to remember uh, the Bernstein family and the loss of Sydney's brother, Henry. We pray for comfort for them at this time of loss. God of the Jubilee, make us the body of the risen Christ, united in all of our diversity, animate us by your Holy Spirit that together we may work toward your coming kingdom Encourage us to declare healing and liberating truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin as an offering of our trust in God's love and forgiveness for us. God, our restoration. Whenever we come home to you, we realize how far we have strayed and how much we have forgotten of your law and your love. We have not loved you with our whole hearts, or loved our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us, heal us, and restore us to our relationship with you through Jesus Christ, in whom we trust. Amen. God's word does not come to condemn us, but to make us wise, reviving our souls and rejoicing our hearts. God's word has been fulfilled among us in Jesus Christ, who sets us free to live in accord with God's own jubilee. You are forgiven. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace to everyone on Zoom. Peace. Please be seated. As we prepare our hearts to come to Christ's table, God intends to unite all creation so that all may share in the promises of God's new reign. Therefore, with gratitude and joy, let us render our tributes and bring gifts for we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in Christ.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right to do good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Now we give you thanks because in the wonders of the incarnation, your eternal word has brought to the eyes of faith a new and radiant vision of your kingdom, justice, and peace. In him we see our God made visible and so are caught up in love of the God we cannot see. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Savior Christ has taught us we are bold to say, 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast.
pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send them forth the people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And may the light of the good news of Christ shine in your hearts and fill your lives with joy, justice, and peace of the kingdom of God. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen.